Who is a platform? Who's legitimately a platform from your perspective? The issue isn't, <clears throat> excuse me, the issue isn't whether or not a company is a platform or not. All of those companies you mentioned actually are platforms. Uh, all a platform means is a business that doesn't make something. It creates value by connecting folks in a network. They could do that through a transaction. They could do that through a social network. They could do that by creating a place for people to innovate. That's all a uh, platform means. The notion, though, that it's a new and magical business model, that's just silly. A mall is a platform. Right? <laughs> it's connecting people who live nearby with retailers. There are plenty of platforms that have been around for decades, even plenty of electronic platforms like credit cards. That's a platform that was created in the 50s with Diners Club. So the idea that just calling something a platform means it's necessarily a great business, that is the fallacy. That's the fallacy, that's the fantasy, but what, who therefore loses in a, in a company branding itself, dubbing itself a platform when perhaps its business model isn't all that? Well, in, in investors lose if that were the aspect of the business model that determined what its economics were, then it would be relevant. But when a company, say, like Compass, which is a perfectly good company. The real estate compass? Comp real estate. Yeah. It's a real estate brokerage. Any kind of real estate brokerage is a platform. It's people who are trying to connect folks looking to buy something with folks looking to sell something. It's a platform. That doesn't determine what the basic economics of the business is. It's still a brokerage. But a digital version and therefore perhaps more profitable. Well, no. If it's a digital version, actually often the opposite is true. What is the difference between a digital mall and an analog mall? Well, the difference is that the operator of the platform in an analog world probably has a lot more leverage with the people in the network. Because the trouble is, in digital networks, very often there are low fixed costs and no switching costs. That means lots of competition. And that's why often the digital versions of platforms that used to operate suddenly become less profitable and less attractive rather than more profitable and more attractive. Who are you writing this book for? Because I understand that investors might, you know, lose some money here, but equally investors should be doing their due diligence to peel back the onion to understand that the fact that they put platform in their name perhaps doesn't mean dollars come falling from the sky. But is there an is are you saving the less educated investor or the younger investor or the newer investor? Who, who are you writing this for? So investors are certainly uh, an important audience here, but I would say part of this as well is my role as a business school professor. Mm. The percentage of uh, students at, at a business school who are going to early stage companies, which just statistically overwhelmingly are actually going to fail. Mm -hmm. uh, has skyrocketed. In the old days, it used to be they went to consulting and investment banking. Now, the majority of MBAs go to either startups or companies that have less than 50, uh, 50 employees. And the trouble is, they go on the belief that somehow these businesses are preordained to succeed. And the reality is, these businesses are often harder to make work, not easier. Professor, are you, are you sort of going to have to keep on updating this book to include then the companies that deem themselves uh, decentralized or companies that deem themselves AI driven or something? Because there's a lot of kind of words that I feel That's companies right. just put in their business model because we're all Googling it and we're all excited by it. And... Well, I, I, I don't have to update it because I got a chapter on that. Yeah. Right. So, the, so the phrase platform delusion does refer to a very specific lie. <laughs> the lie that says platforms are new, digital platforms are better, all of them have network effects, and they're all winner take all. And that's just not true. But it also refers to more general phenomena where promoters use various trigger words, whether big data or AI or mm -hmm. network effects or disruption, in lieu of talking about the fundamentals of what really underlies superior franchises, which at the end of the day is all about competitive advantage. And 
there is not a strong correlation between being a platform and having strong competitive advantage.